Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I will create three pages for a themed art journal and one of my favorite things to do is to create art journals that have a theme. It is really easy to go through the pages since you know from scratch what you are going to create. And here is an example where I did a small disc bound journal where all the focal points were drawn from me. Here is another one that I shared recently where all the pages have this little girl on this type of projects, once you decide what you want the theme to be, you can repeat the same techniques again and again on all the pages, so you can be creative without having to think from scratch. Here's another one where I use on all the pages transfer me. And I have a bunch of other examples here. Here is a bigger one, which is 6x6. Six six. It is an ongoing project and uh, it is my alphabet flower art journal. And everything I'm showing you here is already a video on my YouTube channel, so if you haven't seen that, you can go back and check it out. So here is what I will be working with for my next uh, project. I want to create one with uh, fruits and vegetables on each and every one of those pages, and I think that combining those two stamp sets is going to be perfect. They have so many different designs, like mushrooms and pumpkins and tomatoes, carrots, apples... And around the main design there is a lovely um, art with lots of text and uh, a combination of numbers and sayings. So I think they are perfect for projects in an art journal. The actual size is bigger than what you see at the front, which is going to make a good focal point for uh, a larger uh, art journal book as well as for a card too. So for today I will create three pages for my new fruits and veggies art journal. I will repeat the same techniques throughout all the pages, just using different colors and different focal points. For all the coloring today, I will be working with my watercolor brush markers. These are the ones that I have by Altenew, but you can work with your watercolors if you like, you will get similar results or even with your sprays. Now I'm going to work on a 5x5 paper and this is a, a thick watercolor paper which is going to take water and uh, lots of mediums nicely. I started by spraying my paper with water and then on top I'm going to squeeze some of that uh, watercolor in the brushes. Normally these brushes have a good flow control, so not uh, too much is coming out of the brushes. However, I am squeezing them because I want to have more color here and I even help that with uh, a little bit of uh, water so they can blend nicely. On all the pages, on all the three backgrounds that I will create, I will use colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, which is going to make my life easy. I will know that it's going to come up nicely and I'm not using more than two colors. I think just two are enough. Lots of things are going to happen in the next layers, so I don't need to start with a very busy colorful background. I sped up the drying process using my heat tool and now I'm going to add some splashes. For that I'm using the same marker that I use for the background, it's the same green one. I'm just squeezing a little bit on the table and then use that to add the splashes. So for the first page I went with yellow and uh, green, now for the second page I'm going to go with green and blue, again repeating the exact same technique. I always have a water spray bottle next to me so that I can help those colors blend even better. And of course remember that for this technique you need to work on watercolor paper. And especially if the watercolor paper is quite thick you will get better results as when the paper is going to dry it's going to lay completely flat. So again I did dry this page with my heat gun and now with the same technique I'm adding some splashes using the blue marker which is the darkest from the two that I used for the background. And let's move on to the third and last background for today. I will work with red and I'm going to mix that with orange. Again I will spray all over with water to help those colors blend better. And I'm going to tilt the paper up and down until I'm happy with the result. I'm going to use my heat gun to make sure that this is completely dry and then add the splashes with a darker marker, which in this case is the red one. So here are all the three backgrounds that I have up to now. All of them are 5x5 five five, and let's add some visual texture at the background to make them look more interesting. 
In this case, I'm going to use a stencil. I will use the same stencil throughout all the pages so that I don't introduce too many new products. And this is a stencil that I used in a previous project too. Using the same stencil throughout all the pages is going to work just fine as long as the design of your stencil is quite generic. And there are so many ways to work with a stencil over a background. Here I decided to go with inking and I'm using a color of uh, Distress which is uh, quite similar with the green that I have underneath. And I'm also going to go over the stencil with a baby wipe which is going to give a lovely texture, it's going to lift color and it will give a lovely ghost effect once it is dry. I will move on to the next page. I didn't even bother to clean my stencil. This time I'm using uh, a blue color, which is similar to the blue that I have on the background. And again, I'm going to switch to my baby wipe and just uh, rub it all over the stencil again to lift some color and to have some ghosting effect. And let's move on to the third one. Again, the same techniques. This time I will go with a red ink as well as lifting color with my baby wipe. The fun part is that you are creative by using the same techniques again and again, just with different colors, and you can go ahead and create many, many of those backgrounds, bind them together in a, an art journal, and you have something ready for another crafting session. So here is what we have up to now, and let's move on to the next step, which is stamping. For the stamping, I will be working with a stamp set which is called Background Voices. This has become one of my favorites for backgrounds. I have been using it in my latest uh, couple of uh, projects and uh, I am going to use it on this one as well for all the pages. I absolutely love the fact that um, it is a merge between letters, text, uh, numbers as well as some scribbles. They give a great visual texture on the background that I absolutely love. Now, for each and every one of those pages, I'm working with different archival links. Every time I'm going with the darkest of the colors that you see on the background. So here I went with blue. For Then I used uh, red for the red and orange page. And also I went with uh, green for the green and yellow one. You can definitely go and white emboss that if you want to have some white highlighting at the background or you can even go with black if you want that to be more vibrant. I'm starting with uh, tone on tone just because I want to have something there but at the same time to be quite subtle. And once I add my focal points and see how the page comes together I can always go back and add some black here and there. Also notice that I do all the stamping just with my fingers. I don't care about this being readable. It doesn't really matter. I am just working with these stamps to add visual texture. One thing that I usually like to do is to darken up the edges. For that I'm using my vintage photo, Distress Ink, probably my most used ink pad in uh, my craft room. I'm going only at the edges. And you can make it look even uh, more um, vintage looking if you add more of that ink all over the page. I'm just going to keep it uh, uh, quite subtle now and only on the edges. I don't want to lose all that vibrancy and the beauty of those uh, lovely bright colors. And now for the last step on the background, and I'm going to call those done, I'm adding some uh, white splashes. I'm doing that with uh, white spray paint. You can do that with uh, thinned, water thinned gesso or white paint. I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see a close up look on all three of the backgrounds. And probably here you can see the ghosting effect that I got with a baby wipe through the stencil. Absolutely love them. I think they are just stunning. And uh, any focal point you add on those, along with a quote, is going to make a beautiful art journal page. For my first focal point, I'm going to stamp the apples. These come from the Basic Fruits stamp set. I'm going to stamp that with archival ink, since I'm going to uh, color everything with my watercolor paint brush markers, which I used for the backgrounds as well, so I'm not going to introduce any new mediums for coloring. One of my favorite things about these designs are the artwork that is around the focal point. So you will see some uh, scribbles, some uh, letters, words and stuff all around the apples, which I really want to have on top of my background. That's why I'm going to stamp directly on top. Since this is quite of a big image, I went with my stamping platform just to make sure that I can stamp over again and again until I get a good impression. And also don't forget that I'm stamping on top of watercolor paper which has some texture and you will never get a perfect impression as if you stamped on a smooth paper. 
So here I don't care if I don't have a perfect impression of the apples, after all I'm planning to color the apples on the separate paper and then fuzzy cut them, which is something that I always like to do. Now I'm going to bring in the other stamp set that has the exact same uh, look and feel with the first one that I used. This is called v Basic Badges and it is an A4 big stamp set or a letter sized one for my US friends. And um, I decided to go with the mushrooms from this stamp set as well as with the pumpkins. But I am planning to use each and every one of these designs for a different page on my Fruits and Veggies new art journal. So I stamped the image once on uh, my uh, mixed media paper and then one more time on top of a background. So on the red one I decided to go with the mushrooms. I did stamp it quite low and then to get the rest of the detail I stamped it at the top. And the, on the bluish one I went with the pumpkins. Now I'm going to do the coloring. And of course when you are coloring your uh, focal points you can use any type of coloring medium that you like. Here I'm working with my watercolor brushes since I use them for the background and I had them on my table. But of course you can go with your alcohol markers, you can go with your pencils, just go for it. The only tip that you need to keep in mind is that before you go ahead and stamp your image, just keep in mind what you're going to work with for coloring. So if you are going to work with your alcohol markers, you need to use an ink that is alcohol marker friendly. Here I knew from the beginning that I was going to work with watercolors, that's why I went with my jet black archival ink, since I know that it is permanent and it doesn't smudge or smear when I am using water on top of it. With these brush markers you can go and color directly on the paper if you like, however I'm not working on watercolor paper here since I want to have a good stamping impression and um, I went and stamped on top of mixed media paper, this is mixed media paper by Ranger by the way, and it is off-white, it has a slightly vanilla color. Now I decided to apply some of that uh, color on top of my glass mat and I'm picking up the color with a brush from there. I feel like I have more control using this technique. For the center, the inside of the apple, you can leave it as it is since it is already vanilla colored. However, I went ahead and added just a slight um, color. This is a very light brown and I'm also adding some uh, brown color on the branches. Now I will move on and color the pumpkins. For that I will uh, combine yellow with orange and uh, the, in this case I'm working directly on the pumpkins since I want them to be quite vibrant and I'm letting the water do the work. I just apply the color there and then with my water brush I apply water and it's going to help that color blend. Also notice that although I'm not working on watercolor paper which is made to help those colors blend and I'm working on a mixed media paper, I still get good results. Just make sure that you don't add too much water. I'm also planning to fuzzy cut those images so I don't care if I go outside of the lines and you will see that it looks like a hot mess here but once I use my scissors and fuzzy cut everything it's going to look just fine. Now here is one of my mistakes. I'm going to use um, oranges, yellows and uh, a touch of pink for coloring the mushrooms which is a big mistake because I didn't pay attention on what colors I had on the background and you will see what I mean in a bit. So here I have all the images ready to go, all colored, and I'm going to use my scissors to fuzzy cut the image. It looks quite difficult, but don't worry, I'm not going to cut any text, I'm just going to go around the leaves and the apples. If you feel that uh, a part of it is super difficult to fuzzy cut, then just uh, leave it aside and cut it separately, and you can put things together directly on top of your background when you stick all the images down. And I get a lot of comments about my fuzzy cutting. I absolutely love that. I find it very relaxing. That's why I keep on doing it. Now, if you want to help that focal point pop even more against the background, especially since we have green leaves on top of green background, you can go and add some shading before you stick the apples on top. That's what I'm doing here with my blending brush and my distress ink. That's a vintage photo, which is the exact same color that I have on the edges. So everything matches nicely. Another thing that I always like to do on my pages is to have the focal points 
somehow grounded. I don't like to have focal points just floating on my page. That's something I do and uh, I don't know, it uh, can drive me crazy. So anyway, I'm using some washi tape here and this is um, a lovely washi tape with uh, a very a design which is very versatile. You can use it again and again throughout all of your pages. It is quite wide so I like to treat it in little uh, strips and uh, it is going to provide kind of a uh, ground for my apples. I usually stick things down with my Nouveau Deluxe glue, but here I'm working with my Simon Says Stamp uh, Tacky Glue. It works perfectly. And um, when I didn't have my order of uh, Nouveau Deluxe glue and I ran out, I grabbed this um, that I had in my stash and I found that it is uh, great. Before I switch to another glue, I need to finish it. Otherwise, it's going to clog on me. So I'm going to use it until it's uh, empty. And since I have some washi tape on one side of my page, I'm going to add a little bit of that on the other side at the top, just to balance things out. And that part happens to have the word plant, which is one of those happy accidents that happen, and you absolutely know at that point that that was the perfect placement. I'm also bringing in another washi tape. This one has a black background with white words on top, and I think that those two uh, washi tapes really complement each other. And I also did some stamping with uh, black ink around my focal point. Now let's talk a little bit about the quotes. Around the focal points there are uh, phrases that work great with them. So I'm going to bring in the um, apple here and it says an apple a day keeps anyone away <laughs> if you throw it hard enough. The way I did use the stamping with all the washi tape that I have and that I cut out, it doesn't show on my project as it is. That's why I'm just going to uh, copy that idea and just uh, print it out on my label maker. You can print it out on uh, your printer if you like. I went with a very small font for this project and uh, I ran out of tape that is uh, quite thin, so I used the one that I had and I'm going to use my scissors to make it even thinner. I don't care to have all those strips cut out perfectly, it is an art journal and imperfection is something that we embrace. Now I have a black page which is uh, 6 by 6 and I'm going to glue my project on top of that. This is going to give a lovely frame to my artwork. You can keep it as it is, frame it and decorate your house. It could make a great project for decorating your kitchen too. However, I did go for an art journal here, so I used the disc bound system to put all the pages together. Here are some close-up photos on the first page for today, which is probably my favorite from all three. And let's move on to the second page for today. This is the one with the pumpkins. Again, I'm doing the same technique as I did for the first page where I'm adding a little bit of shading exactly where I'm going to stick the pumpkins. This is going to help them uh, stand out against the background even more. I'm going to use a piece of the washi tape again to add some ground for my pumpkins since I don't like them to float. And again, just like I did with the first page, I am going to bring the second uh, washi tape and combine the two. I like that uh, they are kind of uh, negative one of the other. So you have a white background with black details and here you have a back black background with white details. I am going to stick some washi tape on another side of uh, the page just to balance it up a little bit. I'm also going to add some stamping here and there with black ink this time, not all over the place, just mainly around the, the edges and around the focal point. And I'm going to bring in my white gel pen and add some highlights. This is a um, detail that I did on the first page as well, but I just, I think I didn't film that. So I'm adding the highlights, never paying attention on where the light source is. I like this cartoonish look and feel on my pages and I absolutely love how the white highlights look on the projects. For my quote, I went with a pumpkin pan that says, uh, let's give them pumpkin to talk about, which again, I did print that on my label maker. I'm going to stick the project on a black page again, and I'm going to call this one done. Here are some close-up photos on the second project for today.
And finally, let's move on to the third project for today. Now, this is where I made the mistake. When I place the mushrooms on top of my background, they don't stand out. And that's why I had to color them again. However, the mushrooms with the pink and yellowish uh, coloring are just gorgeous. So I may use them probably on top of a card and I'm going to place them on top of different backgrounds and you can see how lovely they look. I would say it would look better on a green and bluish one. So anyway, I'm going to keep that aside for another project and let's move on and do the same techniques for this page as well. So again, I'm going to bring in my washi tape and uh, create kind of a ground. I'm going to mix those two washi tapes and also add some washi tape on another area of the page again. And I will bring in my mushrooms and stick them down. I didn't do the shading here because I thought that it wasn't necessary, but again, if you want, you can go at the background with uh, some vintage photo and add some shading to help the focal point pop even more. For my quote here I went with a phrase that says be yourself, everyone else is already mushrooms, which is one of the phrases that are already in the stamp with the mushrooms all around where you can see that lovely artwork. However, I want that to be uh, more visible and to stand out, that's why I had to print it out again and stick it with uh, black letters on uh, white background. Again here I'm going to do some stamping with black this time, not all over the place, mainly staying around the image and on the edges. I did use my white gel pen to add some highlights on all the cutouts, just like always, and I'm going to stick that on top of my black cardstock again. So here are some close-up photos on the third project for today and uh, I'm also going to show you how I did uh, create the binding. I did use a punch for that but uh, I do have another way on how you can disc bound your uh, projects without actually punching holes on them. This is going to allow you to frame them if you want or put them back on the page. If you want to see such a video let me know in the comments below. But anyway, in this case, I'm just punching holes using my Happy Planner punch. You cannot punch more than one page at a time since this is kind of a thick watercolor paper. And I'm going to bring in my discs. I'm just going to look through my collection and find the ones that I want to use for today. I decided to go with those black ones, which are kind of uh, big, so I can add even more pages if I want to. And if I add too much bulk, I can always switch to even larger discs. Sticking your projects on another page, like I did today with those black 6x6 pages, allow you to have a lovely frame that um, I think enhances the artwork and at the same time it keeps the back of the page nice and clean. And you see those rings are going to allow me to add even more pages on this little journal. Just like always, a full list of all the supplies that I used is linked down below in the description area. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and also like this video and leave me a comment down below. I love to read your thoughts. Thank you all so much for spending some time with me today and I'll see you all next time.